not only do you experience more out of it, but it's like this, it's like building this base, like a runner's base where you like, you get confidence. Like, it's like, whoa, you know, I put my mind to it. We worked so much and we got here. It's like, whoa, that was easy. What else can I do? You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. Hey, my friends, welcome to conversation number 60 of the Christoph Lewis podcast. I'm very excited for today's guests. That's right, two guests. My guests today are Masha and Mitch Lofsted, and I've known Masha f- since high school, so it's been a really, really long time, and I just met her husband, Mitch, and they're wonderful, wonderful people. They're incredibly optimistic people, and I absolutely love their mindset. I've been following them on social media for quite a long time, seeing their relationship. I told them I have like this good bullshit detector even through social media, so I was able to recognize and see very clearly what they were doing with everything in their lives, and I, I loved their relationship with each other and their mentality and everything they were putting out, traveling the world for years. So I wanted to know how they did that. They also build tiny homes, which is super cool. They're incredible looking, very beautiful homes. So I wanted to talk about their tiny home building, their relationship and how they travel the world and how they left their careers behind to do everything. And how did they get to the mindset that they have right now? So it was an incredible conversation. I had a blast. They're very genuine, good people, and I couldn't be more excited to share this conversation. Remember that you can hear this conversation and all the other conversations and contemplations, the solo podcasts, at ChristophLewis.com forward slash podcasts. And if you like these podcasts, don't forget to head over to iTunes and rate it five stars, comment, and tell me what you like. So without further ado, Thank you for listening, and welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really, really excited to have you guys on here. We've been talking for months to have you on here. And Masha, I've known you for, gosh, 15 years at least, I think. And, you know, I met your husband, Mitch, here, uh, I guess, a couple months ago when we started talking. And we started talking about being on the podcast because everything you guys are doing was super intriguing to me. And it was really unique. I haven't talked to anybody doing things that you guys are doing. And you share a lot of the same mindset that I share. And it just really resonated with me. And I want to go even further by saying... I really also, you know, like I focus on careers, but I also, because I'm married, I focus or I pay attention to relationships as well. And I just really like, I don't know, I'm social media, social media, and I get it. But I think I have a pretty good like bullshit detector and I can kind of see through like even like social media bullshit detector is pretty good. So I felt, you know, the genuine, I could see a genuine relationship behind that too. And you guys are doing some cool things. You're obviously building tiny homes together and you're just living, a, a f- honestly, a free and a happy life together and you kind of like the way I, I described it when we were talking before is you kind of broke out of this like cookie cutter mold of life that I think most people think they have to live like this is just the way life is and you guys have broken out of that you've done a plethora of traveling and all of these other things so thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me and talk about all this stuff. Yeah, we're excited yeah. to share our story. I, I want to know, like, I'm always so curious on the how's, how does this even start? Like, how does a person's mind, especially in a, a couple, how does a couple come to like, hey, we want to travel, we want to break the mold that society essentially deems necessary. Like, how do you guys even start wrapping your head around that? Did you kind of just come to it individually? And then like when you came together, it became stronger and then you guys you know, grew more because of that? Or how did that even happen? Yeah, I think a lot of it is kind of destiny or luck with finding the one, you know, finding each other is obviously, I don't know any like equation to like answer that. I think it's just, you know, how life works, you find that one. And so I guess we're just lucky to find each other Mm because 
we both are kind of adventurous and uh, both are able to put our minds to something and make it happen. So I think that was just, you know, amazing that we were able to find each other. So that kind of mindset together is, I think, what led us to yeah. everything that unfolded afterwards. Yeah, that makes but, sense. Well, yeah, because we met five years ago, right? And then, like, I want to, Mitchell traveled a little bit, I traveled a little bit, but it's kind of like, okay. We decided it's, you know, the first traveling thing was almost like, kind of like, hey, maybe it's also going to be a, a good relationship tester. Yeah. I mean, there's no, it's nothing like going away and traveling together is going to test your relationship and seeing if, you know, because we call it a he he ha ha relationship separation <laughs> to a real deal, you know, and that's how it kind of started. And then we talked about, hey, we're going to travel together. And then, well, we always talked about it. Yeah. Like, when we're first dating, we're like, it'd be fun to travel the world. And I think that's a conversation that always comes up. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, you know, romantic to kind of get away. But what's crazy is we were kind of serious and we started, uh, you know, our mindset was kind of on that. We wanted to travel maybe for a couple months or something. But uh, there was some crazy like a uh, push that got us to actually a real like traveling experience was uh masha's best friend was getting married in france she's from russia mm -hmm. and then her brother was thinking about getting married in russia that summer so it was like whoa this is actually a real like had like a four month window a four month kind of window sure. like we really need to see these like in life events so we really actually it became kind of real you know we need we need to go yeah. do this. Yeah. And so that kind of push, that kind of life handed us this like uh, events that pushed us into being, this is real. So we're like, okay. So we had to sit down and devise a plan. Like we need to save probably 10 grand together. Sure. And we need to quit our jobs because that's four months. You're not going to yeah. be able to get that off of work. <laughs> so we got to, we got to do this. We got to sell all our stuff that we have. Because we can't like put in storage and pay for that because we're going to be gone for a while. So it just kind of became a real thing. And it became so real, we kept it to each other. Like we didn't tell anybody, like or not even our parents, because we didn't want to like it, yeah. people spoil it. You know, they come in with their two cents and they come in and they're like, oh, what if you get arrested abroad? What about your job? What are you going to do when you come back? Yeah. What are you going to do if you run out of money there? What if your money, credit card, you know, So endless. true though, man. Like It's, it's, it's endless so how people just who haven't done it, who haven't experienced it, oh, will just flood thing. your whole plan with all their, their heavy thoughts and their cautions. So we just kept it to ourselves. I love that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it became real from those weddings. And then we... We started to save and made a goal to save this money. We said, we're leaving these dates for the wedding. We bought a ticket, which made it really real. And yeah. then we just had a kind of a rough draft of some countries we wanted to see. And that was kind of like the beginning of That's so cool. a life-changing event, really. I think that I always describe these things as beautiful. And I don't care if people think they're cheesy or not. But I mean, first <laughs> of all, you like you said, you actually traveled. Like a lot of people, a lot of couples talk about traveling. And like you said, it's kind of romantic to go travel, but very few do, at least like from what I can see. And I have my hands in like a lot of pockets of like looking at what things are going on. Like I'm very, very fine tuned to social media and the world around me because I, this is what I, this is like my second job, obviously podcasting. And I'm mm -hmm. very, very attuned to all of these things. So very rarely do I see people actually taking action. And it's not even, it's not even just traveling. It's literally anything you're doing in your life. Yeah. People just talk yeah. about it. Traveling is just the variable here. People will talk about traveling. People will talk about quitting their jobs. Like literally uh, all these things that you listed, like quit your jobs, sell your stuff, actually travel. Those are all huge things that take a lot of guts to do. And you guys actually follow through with them. And I think it was a insanely smart move keeping it to yourself. Because again, like, yeah, the variable here is traveling and quitting your jobs. But all these other things, I think just like, so this is conversation number 60. This is a huge conversation. Like this is a, I've done 60 of these now. So a lot of people have told me like, I can't do this. I can't do that with just this podcast or with anybody's life. Like you can't do something. And like you said, it's, they haven't done it themselves. So like, who are they to keep you back from you doing your dreams? And I think what's really hard for people to wrap their heads around. And I think you mentioned family. It's a lot of times family will want to give you advice because they love you and they think they know what's best for you. Yeah. And I think that's really hard to like tell family no, 
because you mm -hmm. they'll they're attached to you emotionally and i think they're gonna think negatively of you saying these things but i think it was super smart like anybody listening i would say take that if you take anything away from this conversation so far take that away a lot of times you know keep mm -hmm. your keep your plans to yourself because i think people will try to derail you very early on love that oh yeah and you know i feel like moves like that don't necessarily have to happen from uh you know, you hate your job or you, you're doing the, the eight to five. Like, I really like my job, you know. It was the best job I had uh, up to date. I was working for a graphic design company. I gr worked with great people, sure. creative workspace. It was just, it was fun job to have. I saw a friend who was traveling and I, she was just traveled for five months by herself. And I'm like, how is she doing it? How is she doing it? Like, I used to be, I'm like, I used to be as poor as her. And like we're just working at the same company, it's like or like the same job at Macy's. Macy's. Yeah. And I'm like, how is she doing it? So I wrote her and was like, Lauren, you gotta tell me. You have to tell me. Like, yeah. How are you doing? And she said, Okay, I saved about five thousand dollars. I'm like, five thousand dollars, okay, like how am I gonna save? You know? So that's like that was the seed. And to this day, you're right, a lot of people don't do it. She wrote me back and she said, You are one the only person, you and your husband, wow. that out of anybody ever reached out to me that actually have done it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an because insane thing. So many people yeah. ask me, how do you do it? How do you do it? But oh, I think yeah. once you really, really want to do it, yeah, once it's like sparks that interest, you know, even though I like my job, but it, I felt like my days are just kind of going to waste. But yeah. Where are they? still it was just traveling was just more exciting. Absolutely. That's what you wanted to do. And that's why that. yeah, that's why how you actually transition is if you have that spark to actually and you want to do it. Yeah. so badly that you actually you, you guys absolutely complement each other like uh, to answer you know we all, we've all collectively answered my first question and it's because yeah. you guys have had this mindset individually and you complement each other very well and you're able to follow through and tune out the noise in pursuit of what you really want to do and like you said you latched onto that uh person you said hey what's going on? How do I do this? And then you had a goal, you know, mm -hmm. 5k or whatever it is. It doesn't have to be 5k, like whatever the goal is. I think something when you get it tangible like that, then it gives you something to work towards. And then if you really want to do it, you'll freaking, you will figure out a way, like you'll absolutely figure exactly. it out and you guys figured it out. That, that, yeah, that was the biggest lesson I learned in all of this is the solution, finding a solution. Like there's always going to be all these problems, but like talking to her friend or, we got to save 5,000 so we can, you know, survive out there. That solution, like how to get there. And that was another solution. And you once found. you have a solution in your mind, it's like it's you're just solution oriented rather than problem oriented. Yeah, because, that's because love that. I mean, when you travel, when you travel, the main expense is food and lodging. Mm -hmm. And, like, you how, know, we had to be at that wedding. How can you afford to live? How can you afford to be gone for a year without yeah. a job? How can you do it? Like, that's like the big challenge. It's like how can you just leave and just stay over there like do you work abroad like how yeah. so yeah what were you saying the yeah. biggest cost is lodging and food so like, we know we, we knew we we're gonna be in france right we knew we we're gonna because i was a maid of honor for the wedding so i had to be there and then there's gonna be four months in europe we somehow had to figure stay like, alive yeah europe. stay alive it's like, okay so <laughs> how can you do it so after research i found this website it's called work away uh that info and that's what you do there you just basically reach out to different people that host they can host you yeah you do it's like wolfing okay kind of but it, wolfing is more farming and work away is more Everything. uh Trade. skill based sure. skill oriented sure. you can do babysitting you can do building you can do whatever you can help people yeah. run their hospital okay. website whatever but we found that and it's like oh that's gonna be that's how we're gonna stay there sure. and that's how you're gonna live because they keep you they house you for, for free, free. Oh, they wow. feed you for free and you work for four hours a day a day five days a week so you exchange a little skill sure. for the lodging and food so it totally like wow solve this yeah, problem of I, food I and like living yeah. so you find like a place <laughs> in france we found a place like in nice overviewing the mediterranean it was insane and this lady had like six houses that she had on her property and we just had to like do some gardening some construction work but we got to stay in like nice see like formula one race see like you in know, monaco that's that's Prince incredible Albert, yeah like, walking down monaco it's just weird you like get these crazy experiences 
that there's like these gifts for just trying to like figure out a problem and like following through. You get like it. this whole other world <laughs> that you don't even expect. Yeah, so we no. stayed a month in a month in France for free. We worked, and then Gosh. a month in Italy, Italy. We did through that program, and a month in in uh, Ireland. In Ireland, and in between, we went to different countries like Germany, Germany, Spain, and we met people who housed us afterwards too. Like for a month, we stayed with our friend who was also doing work. Away. One of the workers, and we and went to Germany. Invited us to Germany for a month to go to like Oktoberfest and all this crazy. So just one thing leads to another, and like you guys exactly, keep on, like one exactly. thing leads to another. But if you don't even start it's like god it's just there's so many like i told you i do so many of these and i love seeing the common things that come up and it's so cliche but i'm telling you if you don't take a step forward to actually make things actionable and make things happen like none of that other stuff would have happened but who knew the workway.info all this like you could (laughs) live for free and eat for free and then you met somebody that invited you to another country and you were able to do that in all these countries so now like your two biggest things that you just told me, your food expenses and your living expenses are taken care of. And four hours is really nothing out of your day to completely nothing. eradicate all that money. Now that $5,000 is going to get stretched even farther. It's in, it's incredible that you guys. Well, by that time that. we saved like, I think we yeah, had 12,000. 12, but then, us. you know, that yeah, that's was the pretty important to, to note four, too though. Four months. Yeah. We're only going to be there for four, four months. months. But then we decided, hey, you know, I think this can turn into a year. Turned into like two years. Turned into a year and like eight months. No. From four months or six months. A year <laughs> and six months. But, you know, that's that's we started from just going to the wedding. Then we're like, okay, how can we do four more months? And then while we were in France, this guy was working there. And he's like, uh, well, if you guys ever run out of money, I was a teacher in Thailand for five years in yeah. this city called Phuket. So I'm like, okay, that's good to know. So that's one of the things we kind of like another had it on the back exactly, burner, another know, solution. just in case. Just in case you start running out of money. Which we did. We didn't really <laughs> think we were going to do it. But then like, hey, let's take Peter's advice yeah. and just. We were down to our last thousand. Well, after a while, when we started running out of yeah. money. Well, like, you, you said know, you went from four sugar. months to a year and a half. So, I mean, I think yeah. it's already incredible. Like for people listening. We like, knew we had to get a job of some sort. Yeah, yeah but you know. like, I think. Even on a bigger scale, like you guys didn't know you could do it. That's like step number one. Then you ask somebody how to do Mm -hmm. it. Then they said X amount of money for X amount of months. And then flash forward a year and a half later. So not only when you try to save 5K in your instance, you're able to save 12K. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you think of the mindset that I have to get this done, I think oftentimes that goes farther. So again, I want people to take away from all this is you guys are using it to save for traveling and so forth. But I think like, just setting goals in life, not thinking that things are possible and actually working towards them, you'll find that they're possible. And then even more so, not only is that like initial goal possible, but you can do Mm -hmm. so much more than you absolutely thought you could do initially. So you saved more than twice what you initially were going to save. You traveled four or five times longer than you initially thought you were going to travel. It's just, it's insane. Just when you have this mindset and you just apply it you tapped into like the vein of what i took away mainly from this whole experience was what you just said is just when you set this goal and you do achieve it not only do you experience more out of it but it's like this it's like building this base like a runner's base where you like you get confidence like it's like whoa this is you know i put my mind to it we worked so much and we got here it's like whoa that was easy what else can i do and it actually opens up And it's like yeah. this confidence like builds yeah. from goals that you build. And it like, so we're like, oh, let's go to China for a year. And it's like, oh, let's save for a house and buy some land. It's just seriously built off of us oh, working yeah. together for these little goals to travel so much like ingrained in us, this confidence of we can set this goal, we can do it. And it was just, it's like opened up the world to us. It sets seriously, the tone for the rest mindset. of your life. It sets the tone yeah, for the rest exactly. of your life. Like, what's next? What's we next? We want to really, do more. It's like, like a fun to us. We, like, we can accomplish. Yeah. We can, like, what can't we do? It's like a joke, but it's like oh. serious. We can. Like, let's do it. Let's do it. You exactly. Know? It opens the world when you, just That's... one little goal, just follow through. It seriously will unlock so much. We don't for do us like a our... five year plan necessarily, you know, the yeah. all those I mean we have kind of more of a, a year but a year a year goal. <laughs> yeah. Because we finish know a that house. yeah, finish a house. We know stay that, on this mindset. We know that one out of that year we'd like to travel about three months mm-hmm. in the winter travel. time. Yeah. Sure. 
just because we don't want to be in Oregon in you know between January and like yeah, so, March. Yeah, so you guys are back in Oregon, and I, that's like one of the other things that completely intrigued me about you guys. You guys are building tiny homes, yes. living in the tiny homes, and doing Airbnb. And what what are you guys doing with that? It's exactly. We opened the company. Well, we just to build tiny homes. Yeah. Finally, just like under our name, and it's just two of us. Whoa. And that started from we love travel. We're like, we love travel so much, we want to keep doing this. So we have to do, we have to design a life where mm-hmm. we're allowed to do this. So when we came back, we design saved up it, enough though. money when we worked in China to buy some land. And we bought land and built our first tiny home on it. And then we started airbnb that out. And it makes money. So it's like, this is working. So we can, we're our own boss and we get to travel to like, we travel to Thailand for three months, and you just rent your house out the whole time. And that pays for your and stay And it pays there. for a whole stay in Thailand. Or, you know, we were in Bali this year. So that business plan kind of works. So we're not tied to a job. We're able to do what we love, and we, we rent out this house, and we're building another one. So we'll have a little more money, have a little more security. And we'll kind of just build slowly our own pace. There's no like hurry, but we're just, we kind of like our first two workaways where we, they kind of did that. I think that inspired us. Our first workaway in France had like six different houses in France and she just rents out these little rooms. And then our place in Thailand, the same guy built like seven bungalows. He rents them out and he just gets to live and rents it out. So I think that kind of bled into our life where it's like, I can build a house. We can rent them out. About it, yeah, but it's it like kind of blended like into totally our trap <laughs> And we, we build, we got like, we're going to keep building a couple houses so they can rent out, but so we can still travel. We can still, you know, do what we love. Because I know as soon as we finish this house, we're going to start yeah. working on another one. Yeah. I just know it's going to happen. You yeah. know? But you got to fund it. So we had to do a solution. Like I can't get a job full time because then we can't travel. So I go fish in the summer to make okay. money in Alaska. I go fish for a month and that pulls in some good money, but something to fund us so we can yeah. Well, you find that what you guys keep on saying is incredible. You're always finding solutions. You're solution oriented, not problems like, oh my gosh, we have this huge problem. We want to travel, but we don't know how to do it. We can't have jobs. Well, that's a problem, but you need to find a solution. So let's think about solutions. What jobs can we do that will allow this? Where can we live to do this? Where can we go abroad to do this? How can we live our lives abroad to do this? Not like, oh my gosh, I have all these problems. And now these problems are probably going to manifest because I'm just focusing on those all of the time. And Mm -hmm. I, I'm just curious, like, it sounds like things worked pretty well because you were so like guided on, this is what I want to do. And you made it happen. But were there any huge obstacles along the way? Uh, clearly or without me knowing them already, you overcame them because we're having this conversation in such a manner. But I imagine there was maybe some times where you're like, well, maybe this won't work or this is this is harder than i thought it was going to be or did you have any moments like that i think a lot uh one that comes to mind is china hmm. we went we we're like we want to we want to travel we want to live abroad and we, we also want to make money to buy land we wanted to buy land to so we could own it and not pay a mortgage so we're not tied to a mortgage sure and have to like stay and work in the u.s we want to be able to travel so we have to buy the land all out so we're like, we need to go to a country where we can save. So we went to China to save a bunch of money and teach English. And it was just, it was a very hard, I love it now looking back, but it was like one of the hardest things. Because you forget all the hard times. It was really, a, it's a tough country. There was yeah. a lot of, like, I would have quit. If I wasn't with Masha, the first two weeks I would have quit. They wow. robbed me. They still owe they still owe me like two thousand dollars they just oh they're, they're so they stole so much they lied they freaking they would like they were like oh so bad and we were, i would get we yelled at like all the time in front like, of the kids like <laughs> i'm doing my job wrong like get out of my classroom like, yeah it's just they're just so like rude <laughs> and it was tough and it wow. was polluted but it yeah. also was like a real molding time together we were just married we kept showing up. We knew we had a goal. It was like not easy to stay, but we were we saved the money and it bought our land and it was like worth it. It was like we got this, you know. Wow. So that was a big challenge for me is I would say so going through that country. That sounds yeah. terrible. <laughs> we were sick there a lot. I mean the country's it's just times. so dirty. You know, it's, it's just polluted. polluted. Yeah. Sick. 
all the time. You get sick about once once a month. That's yeah. insane. And you get down. I mean, what? like you can't sick, miss work sick. when you're sick. They won't, you. work. Exactly. they won't pay you. They won't pay you. You'll miss pay. They they're just no. It's a different world over there. But also, it's like it's <laughs> wow. such a the country with such a like, great history that you're just it was everything everywhere you look. You get inspired at the yeah. same time. But, you I know, love China. I miss it kind of sometimes. Yeah. But it was just, in it, it was horrible. I don't know. Wow. That's, I mean, I know it's polluted. I know it's massively populated. Uh, I did not know some of the things like your classroom <laughs> constantly getting interrupted. You oh. know, I wonder if that's Ultra, like, go ahead. It's very mind control. Very, uh, yeah. very listen to your leader. Don't ask questions. Very like controlled. It was really hard to deal with. Oh my gosh. And how long were you guys in China again? A year. A year. Under those conditions, and you're sick once a month. Maybe uh, more. Yeah, if you go for a run, forget about <laughs> yeah, it. You're, you're down with the cold cough. for, like, half a week. You can, like, taste the cold. Sometimes. Honestly, I'm surprised. I mean, that's a huge obstacle, if if I have ever heard of one. I mean, and, and for you guys to go an entire year under those conditions, it sounds crazy. Yeah, but we had a goal. Yeah. We, had a, we had something to reach, and it was... I mean, you know, teaching was, in Thailand is fun, but you definitely yeah. don't make a you don't lot, make of, a lot you don't, of money. You don't make any yeah. money there. But we needed money to buy our land. Yeah. But this is what this is good. This is what I hear. Like I said, it's crazy, but I like crazy. That's like a shit I do in my off time is crazy. Like yeah. you know, I yeah. have I have no free time. Like I have a day job. Um, I have a two and a half month old, and then yeah. I do this. Like all of my free time, if I'm not at work and if I'm not with my family, all my free time goes to this. So yeah. that means all of this time right here, podcasting, networking, everything that I do is oriented because I have my own goals. I don't want to work for somebody for the rest of my life. You know, I want to continue to have an entrepreneurial mindset, work for myself and continue to help people and share other people's stories. So I have my goals. You guys had your goals. I'm slowly getting there. You guys have crushed it over the last couple of years doing that, but it's not easy. Like for me, it's super hard, super stressful. It sounds like that entire year of being sick for once a month for a year and and not you're re- doing paid. a book challenge right now, a reading challenge. I'm yeah. doing a reading challenge. Yeah, I. That's another. <laughs> uh, and well, well, I substituted the reading challenge because I I've had a, a neck injury for four years. Uh, I reignited the neck injury a week and a half ago. I can't work out. Uh, working out is a huge part of my life. I can't do it, so <laughs> I got depressed for a microsecond. I caught myself. And I said, well, if you can't do something physical, then you have to do something productive. And I felt like I was lacking in my reading. So I said, Mm -hmm. all right, perfect. This is a a great opportunity. I heard a podcast. Somebody's like, read a book a week for a year. I was like, that's crazy. There's no way. And so far, you know, I mean, I'm three weeks into it, but I'm way ahead of schedule. So I'm probably going to do probably going to do more, Um, but I'm at least going to do 52. So you're right. Like it's it goes back to what Mitch said. It's solution oriented. Like I told you like for a second and it's okay to think like negative thoughts because yeah. you can't help what always comes to your head. But I think if the more and more you practice, the more and more you get better at like catching those negative thoughts, catching that problem orientation in your head or whatever it is like, yeah. Oh, I can't work out. If you catch that and you turn it into something positive, like you guys have done over and over and over again. And like I did here with my neck injury, then beautiful things come out of it because now I'm reading more than ever and I'm able to substitute something. So I'm going to like just jam the crap out of my head and like put as many books as I can into it so that when I come out and I can work, uh, work out again, I'll probably be able to read again, uh, in conjunction because I'll be a better reader because I will have practice reading. Like, and I think Mm -hmm. that's a thing that people Mm -hmm. don't think about is all these things that you're doing, you have to practice them. So the more you travel, the better you get at traveling, the more you try to save money, the better you get at trying to save money, the more tips and tricks and hacks and all this shit you learn. And that's a good takeaway, takeaway from what you guys are talking about as well. It's not to be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. Is there like, I mean, it sounds like that whole entire year was really difficult for the most part, but I'm sure there was ups as well, but not just only for China, but like over encompassing you guys working, like Masha, you said you had a job, you even liked it. It's gotta be hard to leave a job that you like, especially, but through all this stuff, is there maybe one or two things that stood out that if somebody thought that this wasn't obtainable still somehow after hearing all of this, is there something that maybe you could guide them in the right direction? Like some kind of maybe epiphany that you had to realize that this is possible? Like I said before, like once you're like have a 
mindset on something that's something that you really want to do yeah i think so like find somebody that has done it at the same like also yes and ask and ask questions ask quiz him like just say like pull him aside and says tell me tell me everything like like i love information yeah i love to get information from people just like (laughs) Like, feel me. Like, I'm really interested in this. I don't know how to do it. You've done it before. Tell me how to do it. Yeah. Don't be afraid, like, afraid to ask questions, especially and people that are like, like, the, let's say the expert level at something. Sure. You know, they're more than willing to share information oh, with yeah. you. You know, they love. I, I have noticed that you know, if you ask a person like something they are truly interested in, they'll they'll. they'll Tell you all the in and outs of that. Absolutely. That, yeah. So, you know, Matt, when you get your eyes set towards something, it's weird. It's like a universal law. Stuff will manifest towards you absolutely. and it'll start like providing you with like these people or like people who know what they're doing, like people who travel. I don't know. It just creates like this, like you start attracting these kind of like things. And then it just, like you said, like, if you're sure. interested, ask. Don't ask. be afraid to feel I like just just go for it. Just tell me. Don't don't. It's not it's not being rude. You just like it's the only way to. It's almost it out. like it's almost yeah. like it's, that. It's it's <laughs> kind of a compliment towards other people that you ask. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Just, I love it. I, I I just love information. Just like that's what kind of feeds me to like. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. Like how we do? How are we gonna do it? Yeah. You know, it's just. It's like knowledge, learning, like be hungry, ask, yes. and just keep moving forward. It's Yeah, I love it. I think that's a phenomenal answer. And you guys have absolutely uh, just taken that into your lives and you have no intentions of stopping. <laughs> and I think that's great. Ask, you have to ask. I mean, that's why, like, I think a lot of people think just because they don't know how to do it initially, they're like, I don't know how to do it, so I'm not going to be able to do it. And again, that's problem uh, problem oriented. But at the same time, if somebody else has already done it, like ask them, like you said. So that's why I like that answer. You don't have to know the answer. You just have to ask the question to be able to get the answer in return. And that's, it sounds like what you're saying. And I completely agree. Like, that's why I have all these books behind me. And I love reading these books because somebody has learned a lot enough to put it into a published book. So I'm going to read it and I may not agree with everything in there, but I'm going to take some things from one book, take some things from another book and slowly I'm going to be able to formulate my own opinion and my own output on life and everything that I'm doing. And that's exactly what you guys have done with everything that you've just told me throughout your entire, you know, last couple of years of traveling and building these homes and just cultivating Mm -hmm. this mindset, sharing it with each other, growing off of each other and then essentially just sharing it with everybody you guys come in contact. I couldn't be happier for this conversation. You guys absolutely shared a wealth of knowledge and I've been really excited to catch up with you guys, to meet Mitch, and I really, really enjoy talking with you guys. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. It was awesome. I really appreciate it. Is there, like, if somebody wanted to find you on Instagram, maybe see you guys building the tiny homes or maybe get some information, like we're asking, ask, or we're, we're talking about ask. Yeah. So how can they ask you questions if they have more questions to follow up on? And our Instagram is Eminem Simple Life, just how it's spelled. And it's uh, you can message us there or Facebook. Like we're pretty open. To, yeah, we're pretty active. Pretty active on Facebook. And Instagram, then... we post pictures of us building and of travels. And yeah. All right. In- it. Instagram it is. That's what my always my default. My Instagram and my website, things like that. But Instagram, love it. Hopefully people ask. Man, that was great. I really appreciate you guys' time. Thanks so much. Appreciate you having us. That was cool. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. All right. See you guys later. See ya. Good vibration.